Hey guys, I'm in the greenhouse at Smith Nature Friendly Farms and I want to talk to you guys about toxic squash. Yeah, that's a real thing. Let's, let's find out about it. All right, I'm always amazed that more people do not know about toxic squash. It's not something I knew about a long time ago either. It's something I only learned about in the last couple of years. But it is something serious enough that I think every gardener should at least know about it. It is likely very rare, but it is something that can occur when you are growing squash. And it's especially important at this time because people are saving seeds more than ever with seed places running out of stock all over the place. People are doing their own seed saving, which is fantastic. Um, but when you do that, you do need to be aware of the risks because seed companies that do save seed actually do take certain precautions to ensure that your seed quality is pretty, pretty phenomenal. So let's talk a little bit more about what toxic squash is and how to avoid it and what to do to make sure you don't have it. This is a beautiful mini zucchini on the go. Hopefully it gets pollinated and it grows and zucchinis are a super fun squash to grow. So what we're talking about today are anything that's in the cucurbit family is potential for toxic squash. What toxic squash is, is back in the day, long before we were eating squash um, or as we started to eat squash, they developed the squash to take the bitterness out of it. And the bitterness was actually in the squash to keep animals from eating it and its own you know, ability to stay alive and thrive. But we have modified it over time and taken the bitterness out so that it has become an edible product. That bitterness actually can make you incredibly sick. And that's what then creates toxic squash. So how do you get toxic squash? There's two ways that a squash can become toxic as far as I can find. The first way is fairly simple, it's stress. So water stress, uh, lack of uh, nutrients, high heat. Um, you can see this quite commonly with cucumbers when the cucumbers go bitter. Um, that's, that's kind of its defense mechanism and it um, becoming bitter I guess and that's what becomes it's becoming slowly toxic when it becomes bitter you don't want to eat it the second way this can occur is actually through cross-pollination with wild plants now nothing online seems to specify what wild plants I, that's still up for for debate uh, I have read that wild gourds is on the list but of course I've never I've never seen a wild gourd. Now, cross-pollination with a standard gourd in your garden, I do also believe is included in this risk. So when you are growing squash next to gourds, you have the possibility of creating cross-pollination. Let's say you plant a zucchini next to a gourd and the bees visit both the gourd and the zucchini. The zucchini, most, more than likely will be edible and just fine that year. But let's say you don't eat it and you plan to save the seeds from it. The seeds from that cross-pollinated zucchini actually can become risk for toxic squash. So you really need to, if you're saving your seeds, you need to protect your flowers from cross-pollination and that can be very hard to do. I have read that some seed companies protect the flowers of their seed products. So if they're growing certain edible um, cucurbits, they would actually have them in houses where they're not pollinated by bees, but they would be pollinated by hand to protect the seed quality. Um, and I've also read that some places don't, will only grow one thing in one specific area with nothing around them. Uh, I don't know how they completely, you know, keep them away from anything wild going in the bush, but who knows. It's still up in the air. I don't know what wild things can necessarily um, contaminate a cucurbit seed, but I'm going to come back to the same thing. I don't think there's anything to panic about. People have been growing cucurbits for eons, and there are only a very few small number of cases of people actually getting sick. The two cases I read about, they're highly publicized, you can read all about them on Google, um, are both in Europe, 
One is an elderly gentleman. Uh, I believe a story was, and I could have them backwards, but I believe a story was that he was given a uh, zucchini and it was grown in a compost pile and it actually killed him, which is, you know, terrible for that person's family, right? It's hard to imagine a zucchini killing a person. Uh, and then the second example, I don't know what they were eating, uh, but it was a cucurbit and it was two women. They lost their hair. They were incredibly sick. Um, and again, they had eaten uh, a toxic squash. Europe is far more aware of this, I feel like, than US and Canada. Um, when you go on forums, I, I follow a couple of Charles Dowding forums, and there are a lot of people that talk about um, not picking compost, like taking cucurbits from your compost pile and eating them because they have come from seed from a previous season and the risk is higher. Now I will eat what comes on my compost pile and this comes down to my major point of how to prevent it. I, I can't figure out any way of how to prevent it other than to test. So anytime I eat squash, I test a little tiny piece of the squash while I'm preparing it and if it has any hint of bitterness, spit it out. Don't swallow it, spit it out, get rid of it. Um, now, I find it more common in cucumbers. We all know you can get a bitter cucumber, the ends can be bitter and the middle can be fine. I don't find the risk as high with cucumbers, um, but I'm no expert in that. I would still do the same thing though. I, if it's bitter, I'm not eating it. Um, if I can get to the center and I don't taste the bitterness, okay, that's fine, but don't eat the bitter parts of your cucumbers. So that is your best um, method of protection for yourself, for people that you're giving them to. If you're a seller, uh, I would also educate your customers as well because you certainly won't want to be at the liability side of somebody getting a toxic squash. Um, now, cases in the US, I haven't been able to hardly find anything in the US. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just maybe means that there isn't a news article or I just didn't find it, but I haven't seen it a lot. All of that leads me to believe that the amount of times this is occurring is not huge and with the amount of gardens and the amount of you know seed saving that's been going on throughout our years you'd think that this was happening a lot more it's obviously not so the risk is probably not super high but i do believe 100 percent that it is excellent to be aware of um, and certainly to educate others with so if you're growing cucurbits one be careful saving the seeds. If you have the ability, don't save the seeds, just buy from a professional company. Um, but if you are gonna save the seeds, seeds be aware, think, think about toxic squash. And two, don't stress out your plants, keep them watered, keep them happy. And three, don't eat bitter squash. Anything in the cucurbit family, don't eat bitter cucurbits. All right guys, that's my info on toxic squash. Hope it helps you out, the usual. Be friendly, be kind.